Hello guys and welcome back to the channel. In today's tutorial I'm going to be showing you perhaps one of my favorite um, rigs in Blender. It's a very simple rig and it's called the Bendy Bone Rig and it's very very fun to use it for like characters and kind of like stylized things in particular. I've actually covered this in an older video but I thought it's time to do an updated version. And this is just a very powerful and simple rig. I will be uploading my um, file here to my Patreon. But other than that, it's actually really simple. I'd say this is beginner friendly. So you can control the bottom here and you can control the top. And what you get here is um, also a bit of deformation automatically, which is really cool. Um, and you could actually select this bone here. Don't worry, I'm gonna show you how to set all this up in a second, but you can like go to your constraints even and you can affect the influence so you don't kind of get that sort of squishing. So it's actually a very powerful rig. So I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial and I'm gonna show you how to set it all up. So in order to test this out, let's make a little example um, object. So I'm just gonna delete everything in the scene and in my front of graphic view, I'm gonna go shift A. I'm gonna go to my mesh options and add in a cylinder. Let's just quickly go to our add cylinder settings here and let's make the radius 0.25 and um, yeah let's just drop it down tab into edit mode and if you go control R you see the little yellow line that's the loop tool just left click twice and then come here to the loop cut and slide and let's make this 45 on the number and that should give us nice consistent little squares now as an optional little thing I'm just going to select both of these caps with the face select mode I'm holding in shift so they're both active and I'm going to go control B and just give them a slight bevel like so. And that's all we have to do. We're gonna tab back out. We're gonna right click and go shade smooth. And uh, actually while we're in edit mode quickly, we might just move it up. Um, if you're holding control, you can snap it to the grid. I'm just gonna snap it to the floor. I guess now we have this object ready to go. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go shift A. We're gonna go over to our armature and just add in an armature. To be able to see this, uh, you could work in wireframe or you could go over here to your um, x-ray but what I prefer to do in this case which I think is best practice is to go over to the object data properties go to viewport display and go in front and that just simply means it doesn't matter what you have you'll always be able to see your rig in front of it so we're going to select this bone and we're going to go into um, edit mode now over here under your object data properties for the bone, it's a little green person, you can go to the viewport display and it's important that we change this to B bone. That stands for bendy bone, okay? And what we can do now is we can grab this top handle and we can go G, Z and move it down. Now this bottom one is gonna be our base bone. So while we're at it, let's just press F2 and let's just come here and call it base bone. Okay, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna select this little nub at the top I want to go E to extrude and Z and extrude it up like so. Okay, and in fact, you could, um, let's just pull it up further. You can pull it to just the very top here. That's where I prefer to go, just here. You want to go E to extrude and Z and extrude up a little nub, and that's your little control nub. So what you can do now is you can select this little nub and go Control Alt S or Command Alt S and just scale it out. I just prefer to do that. It's just more of a easier thing when you're animating. I'm going to select this bone down here. Control Alt S and kind of scale it out. And then I'll grab this one, Control Alt S and just scale it in a little bit. So now we have something like this. You could make this one at the top as big as you want. It just makes it easier to grab when you're animating. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna select this bone over here and I'm gonna go over to my bend bone properties here. Under the bendy bones, I'm gonna come here and give it as many segments as it'll take. I think it has a limit, so let's type in 40. You can see even if you type in a value like 40, it just caps it at 32 anyway. So what we're gonna do, we're all we're in edit mode here, we're gonna grab this top bone here, and we wanna disconnect the parenting here. So we're gonna go Alt P and we're gonna go disconnect bone, and we're gonna go Alt P and we're gonna go clear parent. This bone needs to be completely separate. And then what we can do now is we can go over into our pose mode. So we've got this bone over here. In fact, if we go to our armature dropdown, and we go under armature, we go to pose, we can see the different bones we have in here. So we have bone base, bone base 01, 02. In fact, let's just name these properly. So I'm gonna select the middle one, press F2 and just call it bendy bone. And I'm gonna select the one at the top here, F2, and let's just call it top bone. Now, one of those things that people oftentimes underestimate is the importance of naming, especially when we're gonna get into bone constraints, having a 
proper file system of way of naming things is going to be very important. So now we're going to just set up a quick constraint. We're going to select this bone over here and then holding in shift, we're going to select this bone as secondly. Now what we're going to do, we're going to give this one um, dominion or um, hierarchy over this bone here with a constraint. So we're going to now, after selecting this one and this one, we're going to go control shift and C or command shift C if you're using a Mac. So control shift C and we're going to go to stretch two. So now if we select this bone here, we go G, this bone stretches along. So this is almost the rig that we're looking for, right? But what we want to do here is give it a little bit more control. So we're going to select this middle bone here. I'm going to go back to our object data properties. And what we're going to do is we're going to go under bendy bones. Actually, I just realized we don't want to go here. We want to go to our bone properties. That's it. Okay, so under the bone properties, go to under bendy bones. And we're going to come here to the start handle. So we're going to set this to absolute. And we're going to come here to the custom and we're going to choose the base bone. So that is the start handle here down the bottom. Okay, so now we can see not only can we move this bone, but if we now rotate it, it gives rotation to this bone. And let's select the middle bone again and let's come to the end handle, which is the end here. Let's change that to absolute. And now we can go to custom and let's change it to the top bone. So now not only can we move and this constraint is working here, we can also rotate and we get this rotation. And between the two of these, it's a very powerful rig. So I'm just gonna select everything and go Alt G, Alt R. And what we're gonna do now is we're gonna select this top bone and this is how I prefer to work. If you go over to your deform here, you can turn it off. That just simply means when you do a parenting to the mesh, it's only gonna be these two bones that have influence with the vertex groups and this one won't. That's just how I prefer to work. So this is an inactive bone when it comes to the deformation. So we're gonna go back into object mode and with this mesh now selected, we're gonna hold in shift and select our rig in object mode and we're gonna go control P and we're gonna go with automatic weights. So now if we select just our rig over here, we go back into pose mode. Now we can control our tube here. Now this is just an example with this tube, right? So if you were to actually now take this and add it to like the limbs of a character or the ears on a character or something, it can be quite powerful and you can pair in this bone here to another bone system. And that's how you can kind of build a whole network of these things. I'm not gonna get into that right now, but this is the basics of the bendy bone in Blender. And I'll quickly show you here is the exact same thing. I've only gone just for the fun of it. I've just gone and added some different colors with some two different materials. Um, but that's something you guys could easily do. This is just to kind of demonstrate and also to make a cool thumbnail. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this bendy bone tutorial. Try it out and I will be uploading this example file to my Patreon. I'll see you guys next time.